All right, so now what we have here is a mini circuits uh, amplifier here. We've got a bunch of attenuators. These are all mini circuit stuff, by the way. We've got a, 30, or a 20, a 10, a 40. Remember the old 50 watt 40? <laughs> that came in handy. I had to use that as well, uh, which is a good thing, actually. And then uh, 30 here. <coughs> um, so this gave me 100 dB here in this setup prior to going into the amplifier and then the generator itself is set to uh, minus, so it's the uh, channel 1 on the left is set to minus 40 dBm um, so together that's minus 140 dBm that's that's a really small signal folks I don't know how you look at it it's, um, I'll look on my chart here, I like to cheat <laughs> actually that's the lowest number on my chart um, it says that that's 0 0.023 microvolts. That's pretty small. You gotta you gotta admit that's a pretty small signal. Sorry for the wobble around with the camera. Um, so with that, uh, feeding that signal in, going through the entire system, up, and I have an attenuator on the. I try to get that glare out. An attenuator here, but um, it's not figured into this because it's after the preamp, or I call it a preamp amplifier, preamp flyer, whatever. Um going to the generator and that was normalized out when I started so <clears throat> it doesn't really count in the readings I get here um, this is a video averaged reading here because it was a bit down in the noise you could have st still seen it but I just wanted to do this make it uh, a little more visible for y'all um, so we've got a signal here it's got a marker on it um, showing us around minus 122.7 dBm so even with a signal as low as uh, minus 140 dBm going into the preamp, I'm still getting a signal out. And this is on the edge, I would say, of being usable on some receivers that are, you know, have a pretty good sensitivity. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the S units would be, but it would probably be down there, you know, like maybe an S1 or an S2 or something. Um, but nice to be usable. If it was CW, that would be a usable signal still. So the preamp's really good. Um, The only thing about this preamp is a little different than the other amplifier I had. The other one was flat out to one and a half gigahertz. This one um, goes up to three gigs, but as you get up there, it kind of slopes downward. Um, so you go from, I think it was like, actually, I think I have the paper here. Let me just back out. <coughs> um, yeah, I went from <coughs> at 50 megahertz, it was like uh, 25. 0.29 that's the spec mine was like 24 something that a little bit lower voltage uh, for VCC on it um, and then at 1.5 gigahertz I believe I was down to like 12 dB and this one calls for 11.92 at 1.6 gigahertz so it's pretty close to their data sheet and again I was feeding it with a little bit lower voltage for VCC than what they show on here they have 5.5 volts it's a kind of an odd voltage but Five volts works fine for me. <laughs> so anyway, point being there, um, you know, with all that attenuation on the input to that, really, really, really weak signal going in. You know, I kind of kid somebody says, "Oh, weak is that?" Well, it's sort of like a flea sitting out on a piece of plastic, who's got a piece of scotch tape nearby, stuck kind of stick to him or something. He's scratching, and it's generating a little bit of static, and you could probably pick it up. You know, that's <laughs> that's my, I don't know, that's just a joke, but <clears throat> it's really that small of a signal, honestly. So that's a good thing. Um, the only bad thing, it's not really a bad thing, but the amplifier, I think you have to be careful about cautious. I remember um, the applications engineer at Mini Circus uh, warned me to be careful because the um, I, IP3 and IP, the uh, compression points on the um, preamp were such that um, the output, I forget, let me see if I have it on this chart. Um, I do. The IP3 is like 40 dBm. That's a fairly hot signal, and you got to be careful. You know, if you get full input on this and drive it up into compression, that output signal is hefty. I mean, you. I don't know that it would blow a receiver front end. I'm not sure about that, <clears throat> but it's pretty hot. And you might want to take precautions against that. Using it with the weather satellite stuff, the signals coming up to satellites, you know, pretty, um, pretty weak to begin with. So I don't think I'll run into that issue. 
but if you were trying to receive signals close by or accidentally got something in the same bandpass close by you know you could do some damage so perhaps something on the output of that feed you know going into whatever you're feeding it into receiver transceiver whatever um, to uh, protect the front end might be a good thing <clears throat> and then it's a little bit of a side note here I'll flip over here <clears throat> this is I don't know if you can see this we'll give it a try one of the satellite images that's actually from today is interesting because that bit around the oh no I sorry that's from yesterday um, but a lot of that stuff around the I don't know if you can tell looking at it but this is New York here and Pennsylvania and the Great Lakes and uh, this was that polar vortex, this, you know, one more, right? Getting tired of these minus temperatures. But um, it's the weirdest thing. I don't think I've seen a pattern quite like that on the map. And I've, you know, downloaded a lot of these photos off the satellites. Um, the reason it doesn't look as good, it's got bar and noise bars and stuff, is I get a little bit of interference. i got to find a way to filter that out. And, well, a filter, but i got to get it pretty narrow, evidently. And then the other thing was that, right now at this house I don't have my antenna here that can do azimuth and elevation so I really can't track the satellite uh, at this point so but still you know where the signals is coming in good it's, it's a nice nice signal nice uh, synchronization and everything so <clears throat> so far so good it's working out well I'm uh, definitely better now oh, by the way let me go back to that I'm using um, an SDR. I changed my plan. I don't know if you guys watched the last video, then you saw that I was trying to use a mixer and everything, and that would, that posed some problems with the uh, difference in sum and all that being, I think it was the difference, my IF and the original VCO frequency was so close together that I wouldn't have been able to filter out just the IF without a crystal filter or something. So I got to thinking, well, you know what? I have here this <clears throat> it's um hd sdr and it's uh to use a um, um an rtl what is it 2832u something like that um sdr usb stick dongle as everybody refers to it um the reason i didn't try to use it before is it didn't have that good sensitivity but then i got to think of well heck we got all these preamps here uh, complements of uh uh, mini circuits to uh, test out here and see how it goes and um, tell you what really nice that's worked out well um, <clears throat> I was picking up a satellite this morning coming up over the horizon it was only at four degrees I normally can't do that with the antenna on the rotor aimed at the satellite and it was doing it so really nice and this preamp by the way compared to the other one I had originally with the mixer um, the one with the mixer had a 2.9 dB noise figure this particular one that I showed you a minute ago has a 0.4 to 0.5 depends on the frequency uh, dB noise figure much better this um, right here is our noise floor it's at about a minus well actually I can tell you what it's at it's at a minus ish I'm gonna do ish on that 118 maybe dB <coughs> it was up to um, minus 103 uh, DB with that other um, well okay two things though not just because it was the preamp but the other preamp the other preamp did contribute 3 DB in noise however also we put oh and actually I took the filter out he also sent me a filter um, can I show you that or not that's the question I believe I can <coughs> this is the other uh, filter so this is a bandpass filter uh, for around 137 megahertz. I know that's not set to that right now. I was doing something else, but which is why I took this out of the circuit. Um, nice test board, by the way. This thing is <laughs> this thing is solid. I'm here to tell you. I mean, that's like industrial grade, commercial, whatever test board. That thing is really nicely built. I really like it. Anyway, I had that in there too. So <clears throat> when I was doing the satellite imaging, and this noise floor is actually higher because uh, that's not in here and it's a very wide band receiver and just like the spectrum analyzer the more you know bandwidth more span you're listening to the more noise you're going to be coming through with it um, <coughs> so that's the way it is but with that filter in there <coughs> this noise floor dropped down to like minus 126 i believe it was so it went from like 103 to 126 so that's like you know 20 ish 23 db um 
the, the noise floor dropped and, and it made a lot more of the signal coming in from the weather satellite a lot more usable, which is really nice. Um, so that worked out really well. So there you have it. Some more fun with SDR, weather images, and uh, in preamps. So thank you again for uh, watching. And um, we'll send you an update as soon as we come up with another one. And also do probably um, a complete sweep of that preamp for you to see. And also the other one, the um, one that has the higher noise floor. But that one's really flat. A really nice flat response. This one's not as flat, but I love the noise figure. And at the frequency I'm working at, the gain was still really high anyway. So that worked out well. So, catch y'all uh, next time, and um, hope you enjoyed it.